Hey, my name is Charles Payer here at JTEC, and we're going to go over the operation of this overhead crane um, and some safety things to think about. Uh, first things first, before you operate your crane, you make sure that the annual inspection is completed. And to, to find out if it's completed, you'll look over your crane for the actual inspection decal. Now, going over this crane many, many of times, I get to find one, so do not operate a crane that does not have an inspection decal. But for demonstration purposes, we're going to show you how to operate this crane. So, another thing to think about is your safety wires. Now, this is an actual wire that hangs our switch. This switch controls our mechanism on our, our overhead crane. Well, if you look, this, this switch is dangling from this, uh, this wire rope, the little, little small wire line. And we've got our power cable that operates this switch connected as well. Well, this needs to be also connected to this line, secured some fa fashion. That way, when you do have a load, it doesn't catch it. So that's another defect in your Also, one thing we want to see if this remote will actually go this whole carriage. So let's just be Another thing is we want to look at the other carriage on the back side, which is actually holds the uh, the line or the wires for the actual motor. And I don't know if you can see it from down here, but we've got some bumps and uh, some nicks. Looks like it's been hit um, and bent back into shape, which isn't a bad thing as long as it still works. So what we'll do is we'll operate the crane here in a bit to show how let's see if that works. Um, before you operate your crane, make sure you look for any obstacles. Obviously, our hook is down. We're going to go over this here in a couple seconds. So make sure you look for your obstacles within your area. Look for personnel. Also, what you want to look for is your travel distance. Look down all the all the uh, the angle iron, the track that this is on, and anything that's in the overhead needs to be uh, marked or removed. Such as I don't know if you can see it, but there's some overhead ducts that have been bent. Stuff like that. So those all need to be either, hey, the crane doesn't come back, come to this point, or just take them out. They're not needed. But uh, okay, so since we have the hook down, before we actually do any testing, I want to check our hook. I want to make sure it spins freely, and it does, so our bearings inside is good. We'll check the pulleys when we go up and down, but we also want to make sure that our hook isn't deformed. If there's any cracks in it, now this is a painted hook, so we need to knock this paint off honestly to do a proper inspection. And your annual inspection will do a more in-depth inspection on the hook specifically. Make sure our safety latch actually works, returns back, and that nothing will uh, come back out of it. Also, one thing you also need to check is your lifting mechanism, your sling or your, uh, your chain. They will all have an inspection on them as well. Also, we'll all have a, an inspection decal or uh, some type of sewn in uh, inspection for the actual uh, for the actual sling. So make sure you're always checking those, and those are up to date as well. All right, now we got all that. Let's go to our controls. Let's try start trying to move this thing. Well, as you notice, these buttons are very arbitrary. Up and down is free. Safety switch works. This is our safety switch. It works. And if you come into the switch, you'll see we've got a bunch of brakes in here. We got some tape. Another brake. This is this is a big safety issue because you could easily get something stuck inside and keep the continuing motion of the crane when uh, when someone's in the way, which is why we need to make sure the safety switch works. So we're gonna hit the off button. It stops. So at least we know the safety switch works. That's good. Um, another thing to note is that we got up down, but then we have a left right and a left right. Well, what's this left right, left right do? Well, on a proper crane, we'll have the markings also on our carriage, and we do not. So we need to guess, which isn't a good thing. That is not a safe, that is not something for our safety, uh, because it can cause a mishap. So uh, that's another reason why we should not be using this crane because it is not properly marked. Uh, also, I didn't mention this, but there is an exposed box up here. It looks like uh, looks like they've done some butt splicing to get this thing to work. Um, uh, this 
screen needs to be looked over very heavily before it's used for any actual work. So, but again, for demonstration purposes, we will actually function this crane. So now there's a couple things we need to check for on the operation of the crane. Make sure it stops on both ends. It has a, a limiting stop, so it goes and stops. It doesn't hit the wall. Goes and stops, doesn't hit the wall. Goes up, stops, come down, and stops. Those are the big four stops that this thing needs to do automatically. Another safety issue. So since we're close to the ground, with the, uh, with the hook, we'll go to the ground and see if it'll stop on the ground. And this is usually a program safety switch, so there'll be some kind of slack on the wire rope, and it'll turn off. Also, while you're doing this, it's a good, ch good chance to actually look at the wire rope for nicks, cuts, and over-greasing. I say over-greasing, not under, because that's a big, that's a big fall. It should not do that. If the, if the hook hits the ground and all this wire comes in, it can snag itself and break or cause kinks that will later break during the operation of this uh, hook. So that's why we need a limiting switch on the bottom. Uh, again, while it's down, it's a good time to look at the, look at the wire. Make sure it's not under-greased, over-greased. This is pretty good, actually. And we're going to go up. It's going to take some time. It does seem to have a slow blast. This is our slow mechanism. This is the, that's done by not pushing the button all the way in. So let's get it at the speed. Good, at least it can't break itself. Alright, now let's go back and forth. Oh, oh, wrong direction, because of course nothing's labeled correctly. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to check the stops on the ends. Uh, this should come to the stop and stop even though I'm pressing the button. And it should go to the other side of the stop even though I'm pressing the button. We'll see. Again, slow down, no, we don't break anything. It should have stopped. The motor should cut out when I when I'm pushing the button and it hits that stop. <clears throat> so that way it doesn't work. Let's check this other side. Also, what that allows us to do is to see if this track with its need, the, these dings and uh, dents in it, if it'll actually still function correctly. So let's see. Oh, it looks like it passed that. That's good. Again, we want to slow down before we get to the end because we don't want to break anything if it doesn't work. And as you heard, it's broken. They shouldn't do that. So that let me switch to turn off. Um, so this crane needs a lot of TLC before it needs to be used to lift any loads. Uh, another quick note about the switch. Um, the big thing about having the mark on top of the carriage is that now I'm facing a different direction, but my buttons are still. So this is saying this direction, but that's actually pushing it that way. And that sounds like a moot point, but sometimes you get in the, you get in the what you're doing, you forget what's what's what. So, um, and especially if you don't use the crane all the time, it's a once in a blue moon thing. You could break things. Uh, so make sure everything's marked. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you.
glean some information from this and have a nice day.